going to talk about how the parent ought to teach their children, how they ought to teach their children. Amen. Before we get started, we're going to have a word of prayer. Amen. And then we're going to get into our lesson. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, how we do praise and magnify your name. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for allowing us opportunity to gather together in the house of prayer. Amen. On media. Amen. On live stream in front of our homes in terms of that is concerned. So we're just grateful to God to be in your word. Help us to hide your word in our hearts, O oh Lord, that we might not sin against thee. Help us to meditate on this word. And then, Lord God, we know that families are important to you. Amen. And so as we go through this series, amen, bless us as we begin to teach what parental skills we need to have in terms of teaching our children. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. So, again, welcome visitors, welcome members to all of our, our, our senior saints, to all of our youth, to our young adults, to our children, to our visiting friends out there. To God be the glory. Amen. Praise be to God. All right. We want to look at our scripture, that our scripture foundation that we're going to be using. We may have some other scriptures that we may be used. But we want to look at Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Deuteronomy, the 6th chapter, 1 through 9. Deuteronomy, the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 9. And we're reading it from uh, God's Word translation. God's Word translation. You may have the King James Version. You may have NIV. But I will be reading it from the God's Word amen, uh, translation. Deuteronomy, the 6th chapter. And in particularly, I, I guess we could just, just the emphasis is on verse 7 through 9, and then we'll go back and forth later up to verse 1. But uh, let's look at verse 7 uh, through 9. And it says, Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home. You see that there? It says, Talk to them when you are at home or away, when you lie down or get up. Write them down and tie them around your wrists. See that? And wear them as a headband, as a reminder. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Amen. And so here... Uh, throughout the ages, God's plan, God's plan, if you look at your lesson or introduction, throughout the ages, God's plan and desire has always been for parents to raise up their children to know him and to love him. Amen. Just as we were taught from our parents about the love of God and to know him in a personal way, we as parents today are encouraged through the word of God. As Moses was talking to the children of Israel, he were in, was encouraging them as parents, as leaders, as, as they left bondage, as they had, had been delivered from bondage, as they were traveling, going out of bondage. He reminded them, as you leave, amen, Teach these statues and principles to your children. I've taught you, you ought to teach your children. Amen? And so uh, we ought to teach them about the love of God and the ways and how they ought to walk in the love of God. Amen? In verse 6 of Deuteronomy, again, I want to read that again in, in, in that God told the Israelites to keep his commandments in their hearts. And so here's the thing. The parent, the parent or the leader, that father, that mother in the home, as you've been taught, as Moses has taught you the word of God, he says, now it is your responsibility, watch this now, to teach your children. Notice what it says. It says, 
teach them diligently, okay, fervently, okay? Now, one text says repeat it over and over and over again. In other words, repeat diligently what you have learned from me about loving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, okay? Follow his statutes. He says, as you have been taught, he said that I've been encouraged to tell you, to tell, to tell you, to tell your children the same thing. Amen? And so we are encouraged in his words to teach them differently unto your children, talking of them throughout the day in every circumstance of life. Okay, your children are going to encounter circumstances just like you and I encountered in our lives. And some of us are still encountering those things. But here's the great thing. Because if you are rooted and grounded within the Word of God, as Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7 tells us, being rooted and grounded and established in the faith. When you are rooted and grounded in the Word, when circumstances come your way, as you teach your children, they'll learn how to survive life. Amen? They'll learn how to survive life. But if you're not teaching them the Word of God, guess who's teaching them? The world. The world is teaching them. Okay? I know we're living in a different time and age. Amen? And we'll talk about that. But that's what it encourages us to do. Many families today are in are in deep trouble because they have not been diligently teaching their children. And I know some of you can testify or agree to this is that as, as parents, uh, while we may not be perfect parents, there's sometimes we're not doing what we need to do. Now, understand that while I'm teaching this lesson, amen, and hoping that are uh, may not be a Christian, I encourage you to, be, to get saved because the Bible says that a carnal man cannot understand spiritual things. So I'm encouraging you to get a relationship with God so that you too can transfer this information to your children. Amen? And so we're, we're, we're talking about Christian family. We're talking about Christian parenting. And we're encouraging that this will also help someone who may not have a relationship with God to know God and to get to know him in a personal way and so that they can lead their children and guide their children in a spiritual way. Amen? Praise be to God. But none of us are perfect, but we ought to be striving each and every day to be good parents. Okay? Amen. Deacon Becker, would you agree with that? Sure. Amen. Praise be to God. All right? Now, so, uh, uh, we're in deep trouble. Why? Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Many families today are in deep trouble because they are not being diligent teach, teaching their children. Watch that. You have your lesson in front of you, and notice what the problem is. Instead, they have left it to what? Schools? We have left teaching our children up to other people instead of our children. Now, I'm not saying that teachers and schools are not important. What I'm saying, at the front line of the circumstance of parenting, the parent ought to be at the front, not at the back. Not in the back. Amen. And many of us can testify because many of us are raised in different types of generations. Amen. And how we do it now and what, we was, do what was done before is totally different. I know I can testify for me and my brothers and sisters is that is that how our parents taught us and trained us and everything else and led us and guided us. It wasn't from the back. It wasn't from the back. It was from the front. They were, they were leading. And so that's what God is asking us to do. If you want your family uh, to be strong, your children to be strong and have uh, stability in their lives. And so what he's saying is that we have to be a good example of that, and we'll get into that as well. And so he says, well, here's the problem. We're allowing schools social media, museums, national parks. Um, what is that we have? Our, our, our iPhone, iPhones, all of those things. Now, 
iPads, every gadget known to man now, we're, we're allowing those things to now babysit, not only to babysit our children, but also to teach them because we don't uh, take time where we used to do, what we used to do before, where we used to gather together at the kitchen table, amen, mom and daddy, and they taught us, amen, the unity of the family, the oneness of the family, the love of the family, the family coming together, amen. If mom and daddy wanted to know anything about how our day was, it was at that circle, it was at that time, we had family time. We could not say, we could not say we were not going to come to the table. We couldn't say that we weren't going to have the family time. This was our time. Daddy said, get it together, get here. We had a time to get there, amen, and make sure you're not late. That's where you got, that's where we got the development, amen, the spiritual development of our home. And not on just the spiritual side, but also of life challenges that mom and dad taught us, amen. And so we have spiritual sins and we had life sins, amen. And you got to put them things together. Praise be to God. And what, what mom and daddy said is that your spiritual survival, amen, working is going to help you to survive in life. Amen. Praise be to God. So we've got to flip the script and stop allowing all of these new technologies and things that we have there. Matter of fact, the things that you buy at home is so it's so easy for us to say. Turn, put a battery in, plug it into the, to the wall, and let them go. Oh, my goodness. I don't have to say nothing to them. I don't have to say nothing. To, okay, how you doing? Nothing. But see, back, back yonder, uh, we, we did our homework. Mama and Daddy would check it. Show me how you did it. Show me how you did that. How you get that answer? Okay. And so we learned all those things. And so we need to get back to there because uh, what's happening is, is that outside world has more of an influence on our children than we do. Amen. So there's, there's our problems right there because we're allowing other things to come in and to do that. I'm not going to shove. We, this, this is what we say. This is what we say. I remember many times uh, uh, people saying this. Uh, when I when I become a parent, I'm not going to shove this stuff down their throat. I'm not going to shove it down. I'm going to allow them to make their own decision when they get older and everything else. But let me tell you this. While you're holding that position that you're not going to shove it down their throat, you're not going to teach them, you're not going to give them an understanding of who God is, you're not going to do that, what's happening is everybody else is shoving it down their throat. Okay? Signs of the mind is shoving it down their throat. All right? Satanic worshiping and all these other, all of the other isms and all the other things out there that is not godly is shoving it down your children's throat. Amen? And then you wonder where did they get it from. Okay? All right? Uh, we got this new age movement. This is, you know, uh, I, I hear, I, I hear parents, young parents today. I hear them saying, "This is a new age. This is a new time. This is a new thing. We do it a different way now." I understand, but if it's not broke, if the old way is still good, Bible's way of teaching our children and leading our children works. Amen. I'm not saying you ought not to entertain things that are coming in, but don't substitute it. Amen. And I thought that uh, our youth and young adult ministry did a phenomenal job of talking about how we use substitutes for God. Amen. And this is one time we ought to not allow that to happen, to be a substitute for us to teach uh, our children. Amen. In our homes. All right. So we encourage you, I want to encourage you as Christian parents to teach your children, teach them the word of God so that they might be as what Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2 verse 7 in the NIV, Colossians chapter 2 
in the NIV. So, so this is what you want as a parent. All right? Colossians chapter 2, verse 7, NIV. This is what I want you to do. It's in front of your lesson. It says, rooted and built up in him. You see that? Rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught. See that word? Was taught and overflowing with thanksgiving. The goal of, of a parent is so that your children will be rooted and grounded in the word of God so that they be able to be strengthened. Strengthened in what? Strengthened to have faith in God as they walk on this journey of life. Amen? All right? You, you, just like you needed faith on this journey, your children are going to need faith. They need to know what faith is. They need to know how it operates. They need to know uh, what is faith and what it isn't. Amen. All right? And so the way to teach your children so that they can be strong, so that they can be teach them in the Word of God, so that they can be rooted and grounded right in the Word of God, so they'll be strengthened in faith. All right? Okay, so in the most brief yet comprehensive summary of a parent's calling, Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus, all right, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, Paul gives a clear understanding or a charge to fathers, to parents in this church in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. King James Version, NIV, the one is fine with me. Okay? Look what it says, uh, my brothers and sisters. It says, and you fathers. Okay? You can say, and you mothers, and you parents. Provoke not your children to do what? to wrath, to anger. But what? Bringing them up in the what? The nature and what? Nurture, sorry, and the ammunition of the Lord. Okay? In order for us to do that, we've got to teach our children. We no, don't, don't provoke them to anger or anything of like that. Now, here's the thing. Children are not going to agree with everything you say as a parent not going to agree with everything you say as a parent. There's certain things they want to do, certain things they want to say, certain places they want to go. Amen. But they have to understand uh, that there's a certain order to what we need to do as parents. Okay? But it tells us there uh, that do not uh, provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline. I like that. In the discipline and instruction of the Lord. In the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. You are to teach is to instruct. It's to guide them, to guide them along life's journey. Amen? So that's what we want to do there. Okay? Now, Paul summarized God's order for parents under three aspects of the basic commands. And that's what we're going to cover. The first one is going to be covered is teaching. The second one that we'll cover, we'll be talking about discipline, and then we'll be talking about love. But tonight, we, we're going to begin with the teaching aspect. Now, this is the way God expressed his fatherhood. And then those who have your lesson in front of you, if you could just make an, uh, a correction there, not little g, but big G, all right? All right, it's a typo aerial there. This is the way God expressed his fatherhood. Let's look at these more clearly. Teaching. Again, going back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 through 9, okay? So parents, there are two Parents teach their children two ways about God. Parents teach their children 
two ways about God, or parents teach in two ways. Through our words and through our lives or the deeds or how we live. Your children hear what you say and watch what you do. Let me say that again. Your children hear what you say and watch what you do. That's why it's important as parents that we say the right things. And then not only say the right things, but mean what we say. Okay? And then to live what we say as a child of God. Okay? As a parent. All right? And so... Uh, this is the way God expresses fatherhood. He says that in Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 9, 1, A, parents teach their children two ways about God, through our words and through our lives. Right. Now, a very familiar passage of Scripture that many of us have been raised up on, amen, and, and our parents have taught us and many of us have heard sermons about, and that is, Notice what Proverbs 22, 6 tells parents what to do. Okay? Notice what it tells them what to do. In Proverbs 22, 6, in Proverbs 22, 6, in the King James Version, in the King James Version, Proverbs in your lesson, Proverbs 22, 6, King James Version, notice what it says. Train up a child in the way he or she should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You see, here's the command. The command is that you train them, instruct them, teach them. Teach them what? In the way to go. Not our way, but God's way. All right? And so it's telling us as parents, our job is to teach. It's our job is to instruct. Inform our children about the Word of God. Teach them about life, about faith, about love, about joy. And we'll get into that in a minute. About salvation, who God is and who God isn't. Amen. All right? And how we live as a child of God. Okay? We're going to be getting deep into that later. But notice, again, Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart for it. Now, as you teach your children, begin is by word and is by deeds. As they watch us, they'll be able to apply God's word, live it because they see you living the word of God. Now, if they don't see you living the word of God, if they don't see you teaching, how can they follow what you want them to do if you're not telling them or asking the, answering the questions that they need answers to. And so they say, you ought to teach them. Amen? Now, in that same scripture, Proverbs 22 and 6, Proverbs 22 and 6, the New Living Translation, I just wanted to put a couple of scriptures, other translations there, in the New Living Translation in Proverbs 22 and 6, notice what it says. In the King James Version, it says train up. In the New Living Translation, it says direct your children. Oh, I love it. Amen. We want to teach. We want to direct our children. Why? So that they can have the right path. I love that. Some of our children may be on the wrong path. We don't want our children to go on the wrong way. So we need to direct our children. So we need to train them up, instruct them, and guide them. And then we also need to direct them so they will be on the right path of life. Amen. I love it. Praise be to God. Amen. And I believe many of you out there can testify, and I mean many of you have testified and shared with you. Look, if mama hadn't done this, if daddy hasn't done, hadn't done that, amen, I'd probably be in a worse place. But because of their love and because of their instruction and because of their direction, because of their spiritual training you, in the Word of God, amen. When you get older, you may 
detour along the way. But the Bible says he would not, the word of God would not depart from him. Amen. And so that's what we want to do. We want to teach them so that the word of God does not depart from them. And then uh, I want to read that scripture also in the Message Bible, the MSG, the Message Bible. Amen. Uh, I like what it says, Proverbs 22 and 6, the Message Bible. All right. The MSG. Notice what it says. It says, point your kids in the right direction. When they are old, they won't be lost. Oh, my God. Amen. And so, King James Version says, train them up. Amen. You see that? The NIV uh, was talking about, I'm sorry, not the NIV, the New Living Translation. It, it says direct. And then here, the MSG says, point them in the right direction. And that's what we want to do. Amen. As parents. Okay, when it comes to the matter of teaching, instructing our children, most parents have a tendency, watch this now, listen to this, have a tendency to limit themselves to only one method of teaching. All right, it, it, one method of teaching. And so we either gravitate to either one, either the one we're going to choose. We're either going to choose the one of what we say, instead of what we do or what we do and not what we say, okay? So we may decide to do more. Somebody may say, I just teach. Forget about living it. Just, just teach them. And then some people say, I'd rather live it so they can see it, but don't teach them anything, okay? And so we have a problem there. Sometimes we have a tendency to gravitate to either one. We generally lean toward teaching them through other words or how we live. Seldom do we intentionally, somebody out there say intentionally, set out to bring these two methods of instructions together to bear up their lives of, of our children in a consistent way. And so what Moses was talking about was as he was teaching the word is that we need to take these two methods, the method, the method of teaching and the method of living the Word of God so that they can see it. We need to bring those together. They need to work together, not separate from each other, but they need to be working together. Those two tools must work together, must operate. They must be in your parental DNA. It must be there or else you're going to have a problem. You must teach and then what you teach you must live in front of them. Amen. They have to work together. And then you ought to be consistent with it. As a parent, as a father, as a mother, as a grandparent. Amen. You need to be consistent in your teaching. Be consistent in your Christian walk in front of your children. You don't want them to stumble. You don't want them to fall by the wayside because you didn't do what the Word says and you wasn't living what the Word says. Amen. Praise be to God. What the Bible presents to us is that we must try to incorporate to incorporate, incorporate a balanced diet of instruction by the word and by how we live. Amen. Praise be to God. We must be deliberate and spend time teaching our children the essential truths concerning God and his word. We must be consistent. We must be deliberate. We must be intentional and in teaching our children about God and about love, about being saved, about surrendering, how they ought to walk and live, how they ought to respect their parents and be obedient. We'll get into that as well. And so we need to teach them to be consistent, parents. So our charge to you is to teach. 
teach them through the word of God, by the word of God, by the words that come out of your mouth. Amen. The words that come out of your mouth. All right? And then the words that come out of your mouth ought to be hooked up in terms of I walk so that your children can see. That's why the word of God said, let your light shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. All right? And so that's why we have to teach. And so let's go a little further. All right. So we want to teach them the word of God. Right? Now, so we're going to teach them the word of God. We want to be consistent in our in teaching and then how we live the word of God with them. Amen? All right. We must be careful that the truths are, are, in our lives are shining enough so that the people, that the children can see our lives. They can see what we are, who we are as Scripture. In Scripture, we are called as parents to teach our children about God through his words and deeds. All right? Through words and deeds. So, the first charge here is that as parents, there's two ways we teach. Through the word of God that comes out of our mouth, the words that we, that we, that comes out of our mouth, and then two, how we live that life. Okay? Now, we teach our children about God through God's word. Verse 6. Amen? In the New American Standard, it puts it this way in Deuteronomy 6 and 6. It says, these words which I command, I am commanding you today shall be in your heart. You see that? And so as parents, the word of God needs to be in your heart if you're going to teach it to your children. Okay? You can't teach your children the word of God, amen, or teach your children how to live the Christian life if the word of God is not in your heart. The word says, in Psalms, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Okay? And so we teach our children through the word. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this. Think back over the past week. Think over your past week, the week that just passed. Amen. I want you to think about that. I want you to put that in your head. Think about, think about your past week. And ask yourself the question, what I want you to especially focus on is the content of your conversation over the seven days. So the past, this past week, I want you to Look at the things that you talked about. Who you talked to. Okay? I want you to think about that. Think about that. Last week, this is who I talked to. This is what, what I talked about. All right? I want you to think about that. The reason I ask you to do this exercise is because it will reveal your true heart. What a man thinketh in his heart, such is he. That word heart here is talking about the mind. Okay? Right? The matter that we have before us is this. The parent, where is my priority of what am I thinking about and what am I sharing with my children? Okay? All right? The matter of chief importance in our lives are the things we talk about. So if the things I talk about is my house, my car, my clothes, my money, if those things are the things that we're concentrating on and talking more about, where's our conversation with our children? Where's the conversation with our children? And so here's the thing. Our children hear us talking, and they said, What's more important to mommy and daddy is cars, money, bills, 
clothes, things of this world, but not me. Oh, my goodness. Okay? Okay? With our mouths, we confess where our loyalties lie. If all I talk about is the things that make me happy or the things that make my, my family happy, and that's okay. You want your family to be happy. But here's the thing. What happened is we're putting more emphasis on the things that will fade away. Okay? All right? So we have to ask ourselves this question. What was your conversation about this past week? Was it money? Was it work? Was it sports? Was it things? Amen. Was it the pandemic? Was it about the racial divide? Was it about uh, the draft? Was it about the Dodgers winning or the, the Lakers winning? What was your conversation like last week? Was it about voting? Amen. Was it about Donald Trump or was it about him being a spoiled loser? Amen. What was your conversation like last week? What did you focus on when you had the opportunity to talk with others and to share the things that weigh heaviest on your heart? I want you to think about that. I did. I did. Okay? What did, now here's the thing I want you to understand. What did your children hear you talk about? Mm. What did my grandson hear me talk about? He's been here the last couple of weeks getting ready to go back. Amen. And so, what did he hear me talk about? Was it about football? Was it about the movies? Was it about toy? Uh, I mean, not toys, but about about other things. And when I think about it since he's been here, I've been pouring in because he's in Detroit. I've been pouring my life, and we've been pouring ourselves into him, my wife and I, amen. And that is we've been talking about what's important to him too, not just bills, Amen. What makes him happy? What is he like? Amen. And so we would point him how important it was for him to pray over his food and teach him how to pray and to say his grace. Amen. To say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. To thank you. No, thank you. How to be respectful. And what, who is God? And, 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 what, and what does that mean in his young life? Yes, he sings gospel songs with us. He does all those things. But here's the thing. When he looks back over his life, he'll realize that grandma and grandpa invested time with him because he was important. He, we taught him. We are teaching him. His parents are teaching him. Amen. And those things are important. Now, sometimes we get so busy with life that we forget what's important. Is our cars and everything else more important than us teaching our children? and spending time with our children. Amen. I believe many of us can reflect back on our own lives and say, hey, did mom and dad spend time with us? Amen. Praise be to God. And so, here it tells us where's our focus. What did your children hear you talk about last week? If you, have, if you have not noticed, our children are quick to pick up on what is important to us. They are learning from our own conversations what their ambitions and dreams should be about. What are we telling our children is most important in our lives? Not what's most important to them, but what's the most important to us. Notice what Deuteronomy 6.6 6 says again. Again, in the New King James Version. In the New King James Version. Notice what Deuteronomy 6.6 6 says again in the New King James Version. Notice what it says. 
And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. The words that I have given, Moses was telling them, the words that I had given you, that I taught you are to continually be in your heart. Amen. If they're in your heart or continue, the word of God is continually in your heart, then I mean then you will have no problem sharing it with your children. Okay? The Christian parent is to place the Word of God in his or her heart. The Word of God ought to be preeminent, the main focus in the Christian parent's life. Not, not magazines, not about what CNN says, not what the, what the world is talking about. Yes, we ought to be attentive and know what's going on around us, but look here, the Christian parent his, his roadmap, his, his, his playbook of, of teaching his children is the Word of God. Yes, we buy books about parenting. Those are great things and great, all that. They aid us, but the main tool that God has given you and I is his Word. You want to teach your children about love and respect. You want to teach your children... Obedient. You want to teach your children how to live right, how to survive in life? You give them the Word of God. Tell them what the Word of God said. Don't sugarcoat it. Give them the Word of God. Don't add nor subtract from it. Just teach them the Word of God. And then not only that, we'll get into it, but then you got to not only teach it, you got to live it. Amen. That old cliche, do as I say, not as I do. Don't work. Doesn't work. Amen. Praise be to God. We should cherish as parents and cradle the word of God in our hearts. In other words, we should be wholeheartedly committed to the commands of God as parents. What God tells me to do, to follow, I need to do it. That's what Moses was telling the children of Israel to do. Look, we're getting ready to go over to the other side. We're getting ready to come out of bondage. We're getting ready to come out. And as we come out, you, you're going to experience some stuff that you've never seen before. And so this is what I need you to do so that you, so that you won't forget and your children and your children's children won't forget. What was it that they wanted to teach them? To teach them how they got out. How the Lord brought them out of bondage. So that the children wouldn't forget. In other words, he was telling them to, to, to take the word of God and from generation from generation, you ought to pass it down. Pass the word of God down to your children so that they can pass it down to their children and they can pass it down to their children. That's what God is encouraging us to do in our homes today. It is my job to teach my children and to, and to take the word of God and pass it down to my children, to my daughters, to my sons, and then sons, and tell them Pass it down to their children and so that they can pass it down to their children. That's the word of God. That's the first thing I'm going to do. That's the first thing that you ought to do. Amen. Teach, it, teach them the word of God. And then another thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to tell them about their heritage. Pass it down where they come from, their grandmother, their grandfather, their great-grandfather, all of those things. That, all those things work together. And then you can say, you know, the old, the old the songwriter said, uh, my soul looked back and wonder how I got over. It was because of the word of God. It was because mom and daddy taught us the word of God. Amen. My time is running out, but we'll come back. Amen. And so the word of God ought to be preeminent in the Christian parent's life. Remember the words that come out of your mouth. Parents, 
Remember, the words that come out of your mouth do matter to your children. The word of God that comes out of your mouth do matter. It has influence on your children's life, either positive or it has or is negative. Now, when we come back next week, amen, uh, we're going to continue. We talked about the first one. We teach our children about God through our words, amen. And then we want to teach uh, our second part of that. We teach our children about God through our lives, how we live, amen, how we walk, amen. Praise be to God. I hope you were, hope you were blessed tonight. As we begin our series, uh, uh, as we deal with the part of children, parenting, and everything else, we're going to talk about teaching, we're going to be talking about discipline, and we're going to be talking about love. Praise be to God. I know that you've been blessed. Sometimes, amen, uh, on the chat or uh, email or, or our church email, just write in there to our visitors and friends how much has been a blessing to you. We would like to respond and let you know how much we appreciate you on our live stream here at Park Windsor Baptist Church. Amen. Before we leave, we want to pray with you and pray for you. Amen. Many of our members who have been ill and sick are asking for prayer. We want to be in prayer. Amen. For Sister Barbara Brown. Amen. And her mother, we want to be in prayer uh, for uh, Deacon and Deaconess Walker. Amen. Uh, a passing of their niece. Amen. And then there's many others uh, that have had surgeries and illness and sickness. Amen. Praise be to God. I don't have my phone in front of me because I can't see your chat if you're putting in a prayer request. Amen. Uh, so if you have a prayer request, just let me know. Or just know that we're praying for you. We're praying for all families. We're praying for all of our seniors. We're praying for all of our youth and our young adults. We're praying for our visitors out there, new families, new fathers, new mothers who are out there. We're praying for you. Amen. I want to pray for one of my brothers right now, uh, Brother uh, Charles Ezell out there, uh, my brother. I want to be in prayer for him. Amen. His mom, amen, is at uh, Kaiser Harbor City, I believe he told me today, uh, um, uh, who's been ill and sick, and we want to be in prayer for him. Praise be to God. Amen. Our, our, our boss list, amen. Uh, so we want to be in prayer for him and his family, then others of my brothers who have lost a loved one, Brother Kwame Dow, we're praying for you, uh, who have lost his brother and already has funeralized uh, his brother. Praise be to God. And then there's others out there uh, we want to be in prayer for. We want to pray for our communities. We want to pray for the healing of, the, of our nation. We want to pray for uh, those who have uh, contracted the coronavirus. And we pray that God will heal our land and that we can control uh, the coronaviruses all over the country, all over the world. Uh, this thing is out of control. Amen. And so we're praying for unity. Uh, our new elected president, uh, President uh, Joe Biden, amen. We're also praying for uh, um, uh, Donald Trump as well, that there is unity and harmony in that. So let us have prayer, and we'll go. Eternal God, we thank you for all those who said, pray for me. There are many who have said, pray for me. Uh, loss of a loved one, an illness of a family member those who are experiencing illness and sickness, those who are falling by the wayside and because they've lost their jobs and, and no wages, oh, Lord God, and they can't put food on their table as Thanksgiving and holiday comes, oh, Lord God, they're struggling to find ends meet. Some of them are still looking for jobs to pay for kids' tuition in school, Lord God, and we just lift up every family to you. We lift up every child to you. We lift up every home and community to you right now, Lord God. And we pray that you will bring peace and harmony to our land. We pray, oh God, that you have a smooth transition between one president to the new president. And we pray, oh God, that there will be order. Because we know that your word says that you're not the author of any confusion. And so, Lord, we pray that you will bless us. We thank you, Lord God, for your healing. We thank you for your 
blessing that you've given us. We thank you for putting food on our tables, clothes on our backs. We just thank you, thank you, thank you for forgiving us for all of our sins and cleansing us, O oh Lord, for all the righteous and creating us a clean heart and renewing a right spirit within us. We know that we love you and we care. And we realize, Lord, without you, we are nothing. So bless us as we go through this day. Cover us with your precious blood. Until we meet again, we say thank you and God bless you. Again, church family, visitors, we say thank you. We look forward to seeing you again on next Wednesday. God bless you.